Scarrow! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Scarrow, episode number 953. I am Stephen in Edmonton. Warren in Vancouver. And Chris in Vancouver. Because you're in the same room together at last. Yeah. Yep. It was a technical foofera <laughs> that got us here, but yeah. They, all oh, the listeners don't need to know that. And indeed, the viewers. I bet you this would be a lot less complicated if we weren't on YouTube right now doing this, but uh, but we are. Uh, if you want to watch this thing, because, oh, it was a big episode today, kidders. Uh, <laughs> it's a big episode today. Uh, we got uh, a Jamie Childs miniscope. That's what we have, uh, is later on in the mini- in the thing. We just thought, oh, we'll just put this on there when, when Chris and uh, uh, are, is in Vancouver, so we can have a light episode, but still have lots of content. Uh, but then Disney decided to put out a trailer. Uh, the official trailer came out um from from disney plus and the bbc we should say too the bbc mm-hmm. put it out as well what I, I did find somewhat amusing is that earlier in the day um they put the bbc released a couple of uh of promotional images which are groovy and cool and swirly and they stuff are very, based around very much so yes the yeah. episode two the devil's cord uh and i i almost feel like it was like the bbc sort of getting in out in front of disney's Thing, just to say that, yeah, see, we we do promotion too. You see, after, we do it <laughs> after you know. Disney um, did the whole uh, Christmas Day reveal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, because they knew that the the, the trailer coming, uh, which that was shared simultaneously on both the BBC and and Disney. Uh, actually, no, I think I think Disney shared it first. I think I'm pretty sure I was, they did, and I, I yeah, a friend. Is, found out it was unlisted before it actually showed up. So I, I saw that one, which is the same one. It was just unlisted instead of, Ooh. I don't know how they did that, but they found the link, so. Oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah, that was like about an hour before it officially came out, so. Yeah, well, I was I was playing hockey like a good Canadian on Friday morning, and, uh, and I noticed that the timeline of like tweets, because I get Twitter alerts for when um, Disney Plus and uh, Doctor Who tweet something, it's how you avoid all the nonsense uh, that Elon Musk has uh, driven towards that site, is uh, uh, I noticed that the Disney one was uh, sometime before the actual BBC one, I think, or something like mm. that, but um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, anyway, the trailer. So, <clears throat> what do we think of the trailer? Uh, fast-paced. Energy, yeah, fast-paced. was it Graham mm-hmm. Harper said? Pace, lots pace. of pace and energy? Yeah. He's got a lot of that. Lots of pace and energy. Yeah, lots of pace and energy. Uh, well, t- well, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll, we're going to do the unprecedented thing here and uh, avoid playing it for seven seconds. But let's have a look. Let's let's walk through the trailer a little bit, uh, and we can, we can sort of um, discuss it a tiny little bit because it I... starts off with, you know... Uh, the TARDIS flying towards uh, the Avengers, Avengers Tower, yeah, yeah. fake Avengers Tower, and uh, and you know uh, it and the Disney Plus logo crashing through the uh, the um, the tar- unit uh, EHQ before uh, Shitty Gatwa comes on and says in a uh, different outfit. Let's let's not forget. This is a great thing about about the uh, uh, many different outfits of Shuri Gatwa is that we can really begin to tell which episodes each of these clips are from. You know, I'm sure that there's probably some episodes where he'll he'll when they're jumping around, he'll have a different mm-hmm. out, outfit for different scenes and stuff like that. But uh, it seems like the light brown leather is, as you surmise, the the sort of baseline for his costume. Uh, like the, like the day the longer one. one. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the one from Ruby road. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is that, that costume never once featured in this trailer at all. Oh, no, it's, it's, no in, it's in there. It's in there with the dinosaur stuff. I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, I mean, oh, I see the brown. I mean, uh, the day one with the, uh, like the orange sweater and the, uh, check trousers oh, and no, stuff no, no, like no. that. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. But no, I mean, yeah. this, the Ruby road stuff is here. Yeah. It's here because they, they do refer to the Ruby road stuff, uh, new series, mm-hmm. um, uh, there's a, some people have surmised that the cliff in there is like uh, the same cliff as where Jodie Whittaker. Okay, generated. fine, whatever. It's Shut not, up. Nerds. It's not. It's not. It's not. Why? What? To what purpose? Well, because that's what people do, you know. But there, 
yeah, there were there were clips of uh, of of Ruby Road in there as well, um, because they're really tying it in together. I, I'm trying to th- think now. They 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 do land the TARDIS lands in Ruby's uh, mm-hmm. home, destroying the ceiling by the looks of it. So, but it looks like it's still happening on Christmas Day. So they they maybe they go back to well, Christmas Day. Just, just to go back to that cliff thing. The cliff at yeah. the end of Power of the Doctor is completely computer generated, and from the looks of things. I would bet the TARDIS is the computer generated bit of that footage with the uh, with the with the cliff. That's a real cliff be. with a fake TARDIS. I would and I would di- I would guess. And it's a different cliff from the that um, too. Yeah. Also, fans being stupid as per usual. <laughs> but it's a, but it's also a cliff. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's not a quarry. So what does that mean? Nothing. Different cliff. Yeah. Uh, how many how many different TARDIS lanes have there been over the years? Um, uh, that too. Yeah. That too, right? So yes, there. Are, then there's like you know various uh, bits of. I think it's from uh, mostly from Ruby Road. I I, I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it I, felt uh, like that anyway. It did a little bit, uh, sort of tying in. It's it. You know, I I feel like this is not just an accident. Not just like the Disney Plus um, throwing in clips for whatever reason. I think they're legitimately tying Church on Ruby Road mm-hmm. into season one. You know? Oh, I think so. I because Mrs. Flood's mystery, whatever it is, is going to be part of that. So why wouldn't you? That's true. Uh, you know, and also just for for branding, it just feels like let's package this whole thing together at the mm-hmm. same time. You know, um, there was the doctor we saw briefly there. Uh, the doctor in the in the season the the episode two, the Devil's Court outfit, the Beatles episode. We'll see a lot more of that uh, throughout the course of this. The, the then there's he's like wearing some sort of like monk bells of Saint John uh, crossover confirmed. Matt Smith is appearing. Obviously, if I'm quick enough on the pause button, I can go to there. He is. There's a, there's a quick shot of uh, of of David Tennant as a hologram. Um, it, except it's like it's tenth Doctor David Tennant, not um, yeah. And it looks like uh, Shooty f- Fifteen is being scanned, so I would assume they're like going back into his past and showing mm. all the different versions of him. Yeah. So Peter Cushing I, better show up in there. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he'd show up there? And oh. David Banks. And all the Morbius Doctors oh, will yeah, all absolutely. be in there. Yes. yes. Uh, well, uh, I mean, Joe Martin. I would not be surprised at all if Joe Martin shows up in that list. Yeah. It'll yeah. Just, like, if that list, like, if that's what's right. happening, like. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that, that was yeah, pretty cool. Do- doctor snaps his fingers, all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and then there's, you know, there's a, there's like anti-grav apparently in the, in the TARDIS cause they can mm-hmm. sort of float up and stuff, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Um, that brings me back to the old days of the fifth doctor when everything would make them go all Star Trek to the side. That's true. It did a lot, didn't it? Um, dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Wow. Dinosaurs. Yes. Dinosaurs. Uh, that is an impressive vista. <laughs> when do you look at the trailer with the uh, <laughs> all the of mountains? Fake. All well, of you know, it'd be great if they had in the very background <laughs> they had like an invasion of the dinosaurs dinosaur. Just they just sneak one in right in there, just like the tennis shoe in Return of the Jedi. That'd be awesome, that would right? Be, yeah. Um, um, I, was, I was gonna yeah. say. I was gonna say earlier. There, it's see, there's uh, the coat. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. it was. It was. It was nice to see the dinosaurs. Insofar as there's still a lot of stuff we don't know. Hmm. Hmm. That we're just getting first glimpses at, which is great. Now, yep. now, um, Ruby is being changed into something here. What have people surmised this is? Because it's not like it looks like a lizard, it, but also lizards don't have antennas. So, what the hell is it supposed to be? In in the uh, in the the Regency episode, it looks like the people there change into like creatures that aren't yeah not oh, quite okay. this, but okay. not dissimilar. Maybe. So, is this the Regency episode? I wonder. Maybe the cold open. I, yeah, that would that would make sense. Oh, it could be, uh, or it could just be a, a jokey throwaway where it's, oh, well, no, we have to fly, we have to travel back in time so you don't step on that butterfly again and mm-hmm. it happened. That, that's my Which guess. Which was funny. Was that Ruby... I, I like that they threw that in there. Yeah. Uh, I one like, thing I'm I... a little worried about is because yeah. he's talking about, oh, things are becoming magical. I'm like, this is just an excuse for RTD to oh. go quantum hand wave, like hand wave We're... like he's never hand waved before. I'm, I've, I've got to feel it. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna get. I mean, uh, right now we're looking at a spaceship, uh, a space with with like two sets of rings. I'm noticing there for the first time. There's a planet with two interplanetary mm. rings. Which what is, could uh, it mean? Nothing. What could it mean? Uh, or at least maybe another ringed planet, which would make uh, no scientific sense whatsoever. My guess is this shot is from episode one, because I think episode one is sort right. of... Right. Uh, it's got all the mystery space station stuff, yeah. Yeah, they're in the space station, so that, that's my guess. That's episode one. Um, uh, here you go. Is the, the Now we're looking at the Duchess, uh, as played by Indira Varma, who, uh, of course, Duchess oh, yeah. means... Um, Ronnie in, in Hindi, I think, means Duchess. Of course Duchess. it does. Um, 
So a lot of people have drawn the direct line from that. But the Ronnie wasn't a bird before, and she's a bird now because she okay, transformed yeah, so into a bird. That's very different from what uh, Ruby is then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah, you're right. Good point. Well, the, clearly yeah. she's a Ronnie. So which is, is it, also a bird in um, language I just made up. Is yeah. is this like a Regency thing set on Varos? I wonder. <laughs> Everything <laughs> must tie back. Everything must tie. You know what? The kids, the kids of today, Gen Z is begging yeah. for a return to Varos. They just can't get enough of it. The, do- they the love doctor it. needs they love to spend it. a fortune on bird seed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Nabil Shaban uh returning as Sill in uh, mm-hmm. season one of on course. Disney Plus. Um well, he could. He's still around. Uh, yeah. Oh, my Bridgerton, which is, uh, you know, direct tie-in with uh, with the whole Bridgerton yeah, thing. Th- with this the reminds Regency me ball. of the... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Just reads the ball. That's all, that's all I want to say. But It go just, on, go it on just reminds me of how people... There'd be offhand remarks about Harry Potter at the time, because that was what was in the zeitgeist at the time, and people getting right. really mad about it. So I'm sure there'll be a Bridgerton backlash as well. R- right. Uh, we, we just a brief look at uh, Jinx Monsoon there, uh, oh, torturing a victim. The torture victim or, or someone getting killed by music by the looks of it is none other than legendary Doctor Who costume designer, June Hudson, who also moonlights as an actor in many different things, uh, that's appearing cool. on screen. Isn't it though? I mean, that's but, way cool. But, uh, the more I see the Jinx Monsoon episode, which is going to be a musical fandom confirmed according to Chris, which means absolutely nothing. Uh, <laughs> the more tired I get, like if Strange New Worlds, I mean, cause, because unlike Strange New Worlds, the episode of which right. I have never watched and never will, uh, I have <laughs> right. to watch this. So I'm physically angry about it. I don't oh. want to see a musical episode and I'm going to. So what what you so what you have done, Warren? I just want to point. Is this make out. myself angry like a fan does? Yes, you Absolutely. have done exactly. Yes. You yes. you've you've created your own. Oh, I understand. Uh, destination. But the difference is, I understand what I'm doing, <laughs> and I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> As opposed to fans just getting mad and acting like it's an external force. It's clearly an internal force. Right. Uh, there's a very brief shot of uh, of Ruby firing a gun, and um, I think it's Doctor Who standing on a landmine. And there's a third person in there in the background, too, in some sort of space quarry or something like that. Some people have surmised that this is Stephen Moffat's episode, which we'll get to later on in this in this news. Sure, list. why not? Uh, the Apparently, the, the rumor is the episode is titled Boom. Okay. Uh, not Kerblam. And, uh, not, no, not popular and about, episode, I, Kerblam. No, and it involves uh, like Doctor Who standing on a landmine for the entire time. Basically, it's it's the like the opening minutes of Genesis of the Daleks, except as a forty five minute Doctor Who episode. Um, Fine, sounds good. Yeah, that sounds all right. I'd watch forty five minutes of that if that's indeed what it is. Yeah, that's a complete uh, rumor and stuff like that. But uh, um, there's lots of shots of uh, episode two, the Devil Devil's Chord, where it looks like music is going to come alive. I don't know about you, but I when I saw the the image of of someone coming up through the uh, a timpani, um, as seen in here, I got uh, Rover from Prince oh, the yeah, Prisoner. Oh, I even thought about that. You're absolutely right. But also, this could explain why it's the wrong drum set. You think that they've they've messed up uh, on purpose? T- They're way ahead of you on this. They've completely wrecked time and space, and now Ringo is playing a different drum set because uh, of the mm-hmm. of um, Jinx because Monster of Mavity. character. Because of Mavity, all these things yeah. are are tying together and such like that. Yeah. Uh, that now the shot uh, we, we're not listening to this obviously as we're watching. But we were watching this trailer go along, but there's a Kate Lethbridge Stewart line. Uh, on this, this dreamy shot of a lamppost where she says uh, there seems to be a lot more supernatural stuff going on, which is tying in to what uh, was, you know, when the doctor says, oh, I really shouldn't have brought in a lot of that chance and stuff with the uh, celestial toy maker um, returning in the giggle. And now there's goblins and stuff. And uh, yeah. Like I said, hand waving. Like, hand wave onium, if that's a uh, thing, is yeah, going to be prominent, I think, this season. Mo- more well, more more supernatural stuff in Doctor Who. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, it, gla- well, it depends how it's executed, I guess. Right. Um, there was glass shattering. There's the person wearing a hood who who's, uh, looks like the person who dropped off uh, Ruby Road on the uh, on the doorstep of the of the church in the Lady Christmas Vastra special. Confirmed. Lady Vastra. Lady confirmed. Vastra. Obviously, it's her. We can't tell who it is, um, but we see a brief shot of that. Uh, and then there's, uh, you know, think about monsters. A monster is it? Uh, uh, it's just a creature you haven't met, which reminds me of the um, the musical for uh, Streetcar Named Desire. Please yeah. don't invoke the the M word. A stranger the stranger is just a friend you haven't met. Exactly. Streetcar. That's what I thought. Uh-huh. Streetcar. Dun, dun. 
Uh, oh, and then there's a very impressive and somewhat like even, you know, 23 years after 9-11, uh, somewhat Ooh, shocking shot. thought about of, that, uh, you are of, correct. Yeah. Uh, of it's not quite Zack to... Snyder's 9-11, a.k.a. Man of Steel. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. But... Uh, uh, but you can really mm. see the Disney money in that shot, I think. Mm. It's, yes, it's you can. Pretty, pretty impressive, I, I thought. Uh, and then you see very briefly, you see the, when there's a big giant metal door opening in the unit HQ with, um, What's his Lenny name? Rush's character. Thank you. Lenny uh, Rush, yes. Uh, Morris, you can see Rose in the background there. Uh, Rose Noble is there. Kate Stewart, obviously Doctor Who in his leather outfit, which, uh, he appears later on in the episode riding along. Uh, a scooter, and indeed, at the uh, when he's appearing in space and yelling at space or something like that. Is he happy or sad or, or angry? I can't tell. Uh, I can't tell vent, either. Venting, I think, just like primal scream mm-hmm. kind of thing. That was my first guess. Yeah, yeah, like he maybe he showed up and uh, an Earth disappeared and it got ruined or something. Or like Ruby that. has been kidnapped by an alien, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sixties outfits. Sixties yeah. outfits. I, I feel like uh, you know. Either they go back in time and uh, and discover that uh, London has been destroyed because they're wearing their uh, their sixties Beatles outfits, and they have to go change history mm-hmm. back or something like that. Or this is what they discover. This is uh, who knows. It's like the movie but, yesterday, except the, the absence of the Beatles destroys everything. This is see. This is the thing because obviously, uh, uh, the, 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 listen, Doctor Who is not going to be able to afford um, uh, Beatles music. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did afford David Bowie's changes though for this, uh, which for, works really well, really effective for this. Uh, but yeah, I feel like the, the whole gist of the, the, the Beatles episode is that, um, there's, they've basically taken the Beatles from us and we mm-hmm. have to get the back or something like that. That's my, that's the gist that I get is from a lot of this because there's a whole dancing sequence in the rain and umbrellas oh, no. Oh, no. in the hallways of Abbey Road Studios. Oh, no. And then Doctor Who and uh, all the, all those same uh, ladies are on, and guys that are in two in the background are all like dancing and singing along. Oh, yeah. oh dear. Okay, I don't think fine. it's going to be a musical. I think I think there's going to be diegetic music in this episode, okay. for sure. I, all right, Doctor Who, you're pressing on me, but okay. <laughs> but whether or not it's going to be a full-blooded musical, I don't know. Everything is possible, as the uh, as the trailer mm-hmm. states. And then uh, one of the last shots is the uh, a TARDIS looking very um, like it's lived on that cliff uh, for about a, a, a million years or something, because the dirt has grown around it, and there are flowers growing on there and stuff. And then so. Jodie Foster comes comes out of one end of the TARDIS and Peter Capaldi comes out of the other one. What could it mean? Jodie Foster? Jodie Whittaker. No, oh, no actually, what the hell with it? I'm <laughs> going with my mistake. Jodie Foster shows up from Contact. Okay. <laughs> so it's right. Eleanor Arroway and Peter Capaldi right. from, I don't know, The Devil's Hour or something. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or, or yeah, that, that totally, that totally makes sense. But, um, no, it does not make any sense. It, at all. it, it doesn't make sense. Dr. Winks the camera and we're out. Uh, I, I kind of like that. Uh, he's not the one piloting the scooter. Unlike um, 11th Hour or whatever it was. Uh, oh, right, when he's, when he's, he's riding, riding the motorbike. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was kind of cool that she's the one gunning around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was a really cool, fantastic, uh, exciting trailer, uh, not made by the BBC. I think it really set some different editorial... Um, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ...initiatives on it, yeah. Chris, what are your thoughts on the trailer, any at all? Or? Um, it's a trailer. <laughs> um, Deep. It's meaningful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm... I'm worried about the tone that it sets about, because uh, like in, in the past, the doctor's always been, oh, you can't change history, not one line. Right. And now it's, oh, we can do whatever the hell we want. I've yeah. got full access to the universe. I'm going to do whatever. The, let's go save Adric. So the doctor also got Disney money, and now he's like, well, <laughs> I can do whatever I want. <laughs> what can we do now, right? Well, like, yeah. I'm... I'm the doctor should know better than to mess around with time mm-hmm. in general. But mm-hmm. if he starts getting all, all, you know, like uh, showy offy with, with, with Ruby and, well, and wants to, you know, like, like he says in the, in the, in the trailer, like, you know, I've got access, uh, whatever, whatever the wording is, I've got access to the whole universe or, um, and then maybe he gets some comeuppance from that. And the guy who did the best version of that is RTD in Waters of Mars, where he does get his comeuppance from that. That's so true. Mm-hmm. maybe yeah. that's maybe that's something he wants to get away from. I don't know. Like I'm not RTD. I can't read his mind. Time Time yeah. Lord Victorious 2.0. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, I, we're I probably mean, reading way too much into this. 
We probably are. I mean, a lot of people are. That's what trailers are for. Uh, that's why yeah. we analyze the hell out of them. Um, because, you know, they, they're they what we know of what we see. I mean, how many, Warren, how many times have we looked at the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer and yes. uh, surmise yes. and try to invent stuff of that? Uh, and, uh, I'm not going to tell you what recent trailer I saw that I immediately went to the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer <laughs> as a palate cleanser, but right. I have gone to the Grand, uh, say, uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer as a palate cleanser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a fun game too. Uh, but <laughs> we're pro- we'll pro- listen. We'll, we'll have probably watch two entire seasons of Doctor Who by the time uh, it, if it doesn't get delayed, out. which it will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which it probably will because it's a video game and stuff. But um, uh, yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I checked yesterday. I haven't checked this morning. Uh, the trailer is yet to be on Disney Plus. Um, that's surprising. I thought, I thought it might show up there as part of the mm. um, uh, the collection, so to speak. But it's mm-hmm. not there. As of as a Friday, I didn't check on Saturday, but uh, yeah, but, it uh, t- takes a couple of days for these things to be. Usually with Star Wars, the same thing happens. The trailer doesn't show for a little bit. That's true. Because I'll figure uh, it out on YouTube anyway. Yeah, wh- one thing that I haven't seen. So this was from the press release. I'm trying to think if I I, I didn't see this on the official Doctor Who pay uh, web uh, website. This is what they call it. The web page www doctorwho.tv, um, which always makes me think it's not official, <laughs> right? But it, on the press release, it sort of talked about the trailer. Here's the global trailer. Here you can see these people and stuff. And then, but the last line is most interesting. The trailer also features scenes from last year's Christmas special, The Church and Ruby Road. Um, but, and then it says, uh, viewers can also expect some more reveals coming very soon with Easter treats being lined up. Well, when's Easter? I can never remember. Next weekend. Is. Next weekend. Okay, all right. Well, yep. whatever that might March, be. March 29th is a good Friday. And Disney said that yep. or BBC said that? BBC the said BBC that. BBC said that. So mm, maybe they're okay. tying something in uh, on, on It's on Graham Easter Norton weekend. appearance. That's what it probably is. It's probably something we don't... What? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm just don't know. Uh, it'll be on, something on, we don't expect. On, on purpose yeah. this time, though. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. It'll be animated <laughs> Graham Norton. Yeah. Yeah. He's a co-star. They actually have him in the show. Uh-huh. It's like how they had the Hulk in the Avengers Infinity War trailer when he, in fact, as part of the movie, is not part of it. But they just put him in there anyway to fool people. Graham Norton is not in the... Or they got rid of... um, Who was it in that... uh, The Master. And he wasn't right. with them in the in this. Oh yeah, in the Spyfall. Yeah, yeah. So in right, this yeah. one, the Graham Norton's animated Roblox slash Minecraft version is going to be a character in one episode. Right. I'm just completely making this up out of whole cloth. Obviously, never. I know. Never, I know. Warren. Sometimes I make yeah. my own stories. Yeah. Uh, well, while well, well, Chris is, because uh, for sure you're off uh, off to Europe uh, in England next week, uh, Chris. So you won't be seeing week after. My, yeah. Week after I, I screwed it. Uh, that's two episodes. Spoiler alert for later on in this episode. I screw up. Uh, I think that Chris has already gone to um to England, but he's not. Um, so we'll have more stuff potentially to talk about mm-hmm. next week uh, with Easter reveals. Um, but hey, burying the lead a little bit uh, in uh, news that I think we've probably known about for what a year now. Uh, but Stephen Moffat is in fact returning to write mm-hmm. one episode uh of i don't know if that's bearing the lead a trailer is a bigger deal it is a bigger i know a little bit but uh this seems like old news now that uh that uh steve moff is returning to write an episode for season one uh like i said probably the one where uh, the doctor's standing on the landmine um with julianne robinson directing i think we uncovered julianne robinson being uh in this uh, a long time ago too but um but yes, uh, mm. Stephen Moffat officially returning, apologizing for all the subterfuge that he um, he laid on with uh, um, uh, saying he wasn't coming back and all that. Uh, mm-hmm. Russell T. Davies posted uh, stuff uh, to his Instagram uh, channel. Um, <laughs> someone someone gave a thumbs up on the uh, thing. To <laughs> I thought I turned that crap off. Oh, well. <laughs> well, apparently not, Warren. Is uh, it on? Is it on? Who does? There it is. Yeah. Thumbs up from no nope. thumb no thumbs up from Chris. Apparently, Good. Um, Good. the uh, I didn't do it. I don't know either. Uh, the 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 comment Hello, live stream when Russell when Russell T Davies posted it uh, was included a whole bunch of emoji, uh, which, you know, everyone tries to read into. But, of course, the, the big one, there's heart, heart, plus sign, mahjong tile. Yeah. Canada flag. Well, what's the one next to the Canada flag? Uh, Taurus. Oh, Taurus okay. and, right. like, a protractor and, like, what, an eye and a uh, dynamite or something like that. Well, um, Taurus is a, also a mathematical target. term, right? So, I mean. Well, there's a different spelling, but, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what yeah. I mean, but they might be fooling with this. Uh, yeah, well, maybe. 
I suspect Canada the Canada flag, flag though. Forest mm-hmm. Rangers crossover concern confirmed. Finally, a dream uh, fulfilled. Danger uh, Bay and every danger. single thing that we only only us old people in Canada remember. Yep. Well, they'll bring in only from the 19th century. So King of Kensington, the Kensington, trouble with Kensington. Tracy, uh, hanging in, uh, hanging in. I uh, guess what's live it up. They'll, somehow live they'll be in live up. it up, which nobody somehow remembers be except me. Night. 1980s uh, CTV yeah, uh, current yeah. affairs program. W5. Up, we'll, yeah, there'll be a W5, w- 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 a <laughs> Who knows? But listen, well, how, how Canada thrill of a has, lifetime. Oh, this will be a thrill of a thrill lifetime. Thrill of a lifetime. That would be oh, Which I, I think has been used in the trailer. Uh, th- what didn't Eccleston yeah. say it's a thrill of a lifetime? There, you, That's <laughs> yeah. your sneaky tie-in. Thrill of a lifetime. Trip of a lifetime. From 2005. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, listen, Confirmed. Canada, Fandom Canada, confirmation. <laughs> Canada is so rarely mentioned in Doctor Who, so for it to be singled out as mm. an actual emoji in reference from Russell T. Davies, uh, I'm they didn't. They didn't that, film so. in Toronto. We know that it's not like Strange New no. Worlds where they did actually film in Toronto and made a point of saying that they did, which, which I did. thought was great. But. Apparently, yeah, I didn't watch that, of course. But uh, so, uh, we'll look forward to it. that. Uh, yeah, uh, like uh, like I said, it's probably the one where he's standing on the landmine uh, and possibly entitled mm-hmm. Boom. Um, but that's just the rumor. Canadian military is involved around. somehow. That's, that's yeah. all I can think of. Cause what, what possible, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I can't no. figure out how they're going to tie in Canada. This are, are, how are, can are we UN peacekeepers? It? Yes. UN Maybe it's in P- Cyprus peace- in the sixties or seventies or something. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly. Yes. And they're like, uh, trying to uncover film cans for episodes four and five of the. Yes. Then now we're like talking. That. Yeah. And then, uh, mm-hmm. that's how we. That's how we get there. Yes, Canadian peacekeepers are there, mm-hmm. not to save the Cypriots from bombs and stuff nope. like that, but no. <laughs> Missing episodes. Missing episodes. Clearly their priorities. I've never been more patriotic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like two two episodes of a slightly middling mis- historical. Um, anyway, so yeah, Steve Moffat uh, returns to write Doctor Who, as I say, one episode. He's probably writing the 2024 Christmas special too, um, which is uh, what we talked about last week, I believe. Um uh, it's not on the Big Finish website for some reason, but the, but the 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 first Big Finish Day, or not the first, uh, Big Finish Day is back. I thought we did talk about this. They announced that it was back. Yeah. I think this 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 cool news poster. came out around the around the 60th anniversary, uh, and then it kind of disappeared. But uh, but Big Finish Day is returning June 8th uh, in in Lona at the Cadigan Hall. Uh, tickets are on sale now. They, they've un, uh, announced their their first few guests, which include like Paul McGann, Christopher Benjamin, Henry Golden Jago himself. Oh, very nice. Who must be pushing ninety by now? Oh, he's in his nineties, I think. Yeah. Oh, Nicholas is he? Okay. Briggs, Lisa Bowerman, Stephen mm. Noonan, his first doctor, Trim Tillor, Jonathan Carley, Daisy Ashford, Lauren Cornelius, Sadie Miller, Christopher Naylor, John Coleshaw, Helen Golden, Jason Hay Gallery. John Ainsworth, Benji Clifford, all those people and more uh, coming to Big Finish Day, June the eighth, which and it says- I think ties in with a Doctor Who airing. At it that says time. celebrating 25 years of Big Finish in the poster. You, so you'd think it would be on the website, but yeah, weirdly it's, enough, it, it's, uh, maybe they it's got a big splash or just going to go with it. Who knows? Like, I, I don't know, but uh, Block Doctor Who had the uh, had the guest announcements uh, on, on this, so perhaps it's an oversight. Perhaps we just didn't Google hard enough. No, I we probably don't. Didn't. We're no good. Let's blame uh, us. Let's blame us indeed. Uh, there's a new book coming. Uh, I, Cla- I Claudius, I Tardis. <laughs> Which is a sequel to I Claudius. Coming from BBC Books. It's just a TARDIS uh, with like one of those Roman it. leaf things on its head, on its top. Oh, and, a, and a toga. <laughs> so you can't actually leave it without ripping the toga off. That's, yeah, that's, that's exactly the whole problem. It it's like, it's, it's yeah. like, it, it's like, oh, what, a, what's the word of, um, what's, what's the name for a sitcom where it's all in one location and they're stuck in an elevator? Basically, bottle episode? Like a bottle, bottle episode. episode. Yeah, it's a bottle, bottle episode with the TARDIS. It, yeah, I uh, know. It's actually the memoirs of an impossible blue mm-hmm. box as told to Steve Cole. I love that. They actually mm-hmm. put like, it's like, uh, oh yeah, this is the TARDIS actually talking in conversation with Steve Cole and uh, a book's coming out of it. So yeah, if the TARDIS could talk, basically that's uh, that's what that- uh, Well, it can, book, as we saw in the Doctor's Wife. That's right. As a woman. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, hey, pre-orders are up for the Titan Comics uh, 15th Doctor issue one. They also uh, unveiled uh, a couple covers for it as well. Uh, the very first one, this is coming out in, uh, what, June 26th, I think we, we talked about last week. The Cybermen are there because there's Cybermen on one of the alternate covers. The uh, first cover's great. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, there's two, two or three different covers. Yep. Uh, the, the, th- the third one with uh, with Doctor and Doctor Who, as I will continue to call him, uh, and Ruby Sunday. Um, watching, walking through a whole bunch of different historical Cybermen from 10th planet yes. to invasion to, uh, um, friends of the Cybermen, I think in there too. And two, you know, an eighties, the eighties one dominating the one. Well done. Christopher Jones. Where's the, the 80s cover one, for that? 
Uh, right in there somewhere. Right oh, above the, the TARDIS. Yeah. Right above the TARDIS. Oh, yeah, the you're big, right. Okay, head. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. This is, the these are some, these are some, this is a fine Penelope of Cybermen. I exactly, agree. yeah. 80 Cybermen are the best Cybermen. I, I agree. They are the best. So, so I'm glad that they're there. Well done, Christopher Jones. So, um, and then last in the news, this is, uh, so Jane Tranter of Bad Wolf fame has uh, come out saying uh, that British TV tax credits must be updated. And it just, it's sort of shined a light on, because I think the, the, the a recent UK budget, um, updated how much money they were kicking into uh uk film mm -hmm. but um but tv was kind of left in a lurch a little bit and you and she basically said that like a lot of uh tv in the uk right now is being helped out by international investment including uh, doctor who you know course, yeah. with sony sony buying into uh bad wolf and indeed of course disney, and disney Plus, so. of course yeah yeah so that was interesting. You can you can read Deadline reported this. Uh, by the way, you can you can read that links in the show. Deadline's notes. one of those annoying. Nah, they're probably right websites. You don't want them to be right, but they usually are. Ah, uh, yeah, they're there. I think they're up there with like Variety and Hollywood Reporter. And I, media, they're so not as good. They're yeah. they're good for breaking news, basically. Right. But I wouldn't say if yeah. you want to like a deep dive, Hollywood Reporter is way better at that, and Variety is good at right. the real raw business aspects of things. Hey, yeah. Well, there we go. Uh, new trailer. Stephen Moffat writing for Doctor Who. Uh, all this to uh, look forward to in in the weeks to come on Doctor Who. But uh, but that's it for the news. Uh, in, in, in addition, in a segment we recorded just earlier this week, though, it's time to talk about Doctor Who director Jamie Childs in the miniscope. Just as I thought, the miniscope. Now this is outrageous. Who is responsible for this device? That's right. It's the miniscope, folks, and it is director Jamie Childs. Yay. Doctor Who director Jamie yeah. Childs, director of four episodes: "The Woman Who Fell to Earth," "Demons of the Punjab." It takes, it takes you away. away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, I forgot. Dramatic many times. pause. <laughs> yeah. Dramatic pause. And uh, the, the Battle, Battle of Ranscore of Kolos, uh, an episode title which I have never had a problem remembering. Oddly enough, it's different enough that it's yeah. just it's not a good title, but it's a distinct yeah. title. That's true, mm -hmm. I suppose. Uh, I'd love to see what anagram that makes. I bet you could probably pipe pipe it into some anagram generator. Well, it says the master, company. obviously. And, Jer uh, Jeremy's yeah. iron. Jeremy's irons. Um, Anyway, uh, uh, it's it's so we'll be discussing. This is a one parter, by the way. Um, uh, we'll talk about all four stories uh, once again. I have watched all four because I'm a sucker, mm -hmm. and uh, Warren and Chris have divvied up the other two episodes. And uh, as yep. also as part of tradition, uh, I will ask them what ones they did because I never remember. Um, but it's always interesting to see the first director for a brand new production team you know we're mm -hmm. looking at because let's you know you got your keith boke <laughs> yeah you sure do right yeah. but i mean but you got I, your I, andrew gunn we're not got, andrew gunn no andrew, adam, 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 smith. Smith. Adam, adam smith smith uh who's the exact opposite of andrew gunn <laughs> yes. um uh and then you have uh basically jamie childs jamie childs mm -hmm. directs the first two episodes of what did he breath again uh, ben Wheatley, actually, Ben, yes, Wheatley, ben Wheatley sort of sets the. Uh, did he do the, two episodes or just Ben? Just he did Deep two. Breath. He did, did Into the Dalek one. as well. Right. And I right, think right. that visual style really suits Peter Capaldi's Doctor and mm -hmm. sort of kind of carries on a little bit. Um, I think it sort of establishes everything. <laughs> Unfortunately, Keith Boke establishes that Chris Eccleston isn't going to be there for anywhere yeah. past the first year. Um, well, for, the, for, for, for season 11, series 11, I, I bought the iTunes version and there's the little. Uh, what do I call it? A closer look. Yep. Um, bonus stuff, which may or may not be on the Blu-rays. I don't know. Anyway, yes. um, watching watching the the closer look thing for uh, Ransker of Kolos, um, Matt Strevens is talking about how Jamie Childs, being the first director, did exactly that. set the mm -hmm. set the tone for the season and helped him to kind of to figure out the the you know tone and whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. And as a result, that's why they wanted him back for the finale. Although they had him, you know, twice before. Because the um, uh, Woman Who Fell to Earth and It Takes You Away were the first recording block. Right. 
I think. And then, uh, is that what it was? Pun- really? One and nine. I'm in one and nine. And then Punjab and, uh, uh, I've called us were his second, his second slash the last. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rec- recording block, block five. I never actually, fi- I'm going to have to figure out. I bet this is why we need production codes, obviously in modern who, so that we can uh, determine the order of, which and you're an addict so we're shot that. and mm-hmm. I am an addict as well. It's, you know, it's interesting that, that, cause I listened to our own interview with Jamie Childs, uh, on Radio Free Scar episode number 676 recorded at Gallifrey one. Uh, in February of 2019, where I sat in between uh, Jamie Childs and Wayne Yip at the autograph table. Mm-hmm. And uh, when one was signing autographs, I'd ask uh, the other uh, question and vice versa and everything. And it was like, basically, they sought him out. He hmm. says, you know, this is like it, it, uh, Jamie's agent uh, reached out and says, hey, uh, Chris Chibnall wants you to direct Doctor Who. And Jamie didn't really know who Chris Chibnall was at that point, which is amusing. Uh, despite Broadchurch, uh, which is kind of a court, big deal at the time. Well, I mean, bis- uh, maybe he didn't know him at all. Maybe guess, he knew yeah. who he was, but he didn't know him mm. by name. I find it odd because, you know, no offense to Jamie Childs, but like looking at his IMDb page, he had... Three shorts, uh, two episodes of Vera, the director, uh, the the detective series that's on BritBox all the time, and two episodes of Lucky Man, hmm. Stan Lee's Lucky Man. I can't remember what uh, what uh, oh, I don't know what that was either. I know the name more than I know the show itself. It starred uh, James Nesbitt, as I recall. Um, and then three episodes of Next to Kin, and then Doctor Who. It's like, how would you like to launch a new uh, uh, regime era of Doctor Who, relatively inexperienced director Jamie Childs? And and he did, obviously. And they liked him enough to, to bring him back. after Because they didn't say, hey, do two now, and then we'll do two at the end. They basically said, hey, we liked you. Come back and do the last two as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the impression that I mean, some of that gave. can just be down to getting along with the management too. You know, sometimes that's what people, people get hired. It's got not to impugn his artistic ability, nope. but some mm-hmm. people are a pain in the ass and their and their artistic ability is off the charts, and so they don't get hired back. And some other somebody else does. That's true. Well, look, uh, yeah, just, I'm just quickly looking at what came after, and yeah. so he did six episodes six episodes of his Dark Materials. That's pretty big. So he's worked with Bad Wolf. Uh, four episodes of The Sandman, uh, which is like a third of what there was because there were 11 mm-hmm. episodes of that. Yep. Uh, two episodes of Willow. R.I.P. Yep. Willow. Well, uh, Willow. <laughs> good, good luck seeing those, by the way. We did not uh, watch that because... The uh, have they Pirate been pl- Bay <laughs> might be your best option. Have they yeah, from Disney Plus? Oh, yeah. It was it was Yeah, it for was tax gone. purposes, oh, presumably. Yeah. Oh, I didn't which know that. Because presumably they paid for it, so why not just have it sit there, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think we should rename that. Like, uh, if you if you make a series and you pull it down for tax... It's now been hot blacked. I think that's what we should call <laughs> that's it. That's a great name. Or well, Disney Auto, but I think hot black sounds better. I saw, yeah. I saw one person out there... I, I, I can't remember where I saw this, but somebody just saying, if if a studio writes writes a program off for tax purposes, it should just mm-hmm. become public domain. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> why that not? Makes, that makes that makes perfect sense to me, which is why it'll never happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he's uh, he's gone on to do a, a film, his first film called Jackdaw, which is a great name. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, meandering, Especially, yeah, obviously. Exactly. Especially when you're meandering, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, starring his uh, current girlfriend uh, Jenna, Coleman. Jenna Coleman. So there's there's Dang. your other doctor. Jamie Chalice, doing well for yourself. So, yeah, so anyway, we will not be discussing that as part of this. We'll be discussing the four episodes which he directed, uh, the first of which being uh, The Woman Who Fell to Earth, which, of course, is the first Doctor Who uh, episode to not have an opening title sequence, so the screen grab we've included is the one at the very beginning of the closing, but... uh, Dot, dot, dot on that one, a little bit. Dot, dot, dot. Well, not the, not the last is what you mean to say. No, no, actually, well, okay, I'll, just, I'll throw it out there right now. So, okay. So, right. Woman Who Fell to Earth was, was one of the ones I did. Um, right. Yeah, correct. No opening title sequence, which his decision, really, but... really threw me at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back mm-hmm. in the day. <clears throat> However, when Jodie Whittaker first appears on screen on the train, the Doctor Who title sequence does kick in for a few mm-hmm. minutes. So that's true. It's kind I mean, of they, that. Kind of that. They they debated how long they should have the music in there for, how long it should be going on sure. for. Yeah, uh, during the course of editing, which is kind of intriguing. But uh, I just know when I heard it, uh, whatever part of my brainstem it's in now. <laughs> After yeah. forty odd years, it's just like ah, oh, there's the dopamine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you're just waiting. Yeah, for yeah. it. Just ah, very yeah. Good. Continue. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
your, well, life, Chris, your, your life doorway is in the Hitchhiker's movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, Chris, you, uh, you watched this one, Chris. Uh, do you, did. you have any, did you take any notes? Did you have any thoughts uh, to, that, uh, that jumped out at you for this one? I took some notes. Um, you, you had said you were, you were dealing more with like thematic elements than specific shots. I was more specific shots, but right. uh, just before I get into that, a couple things to make mention of. Number one, I really like that episode. I really like that episode. Good episode. It's a great <laughs> kickoff for Whitaker's talk. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. Um, Almost 11 million. Almost you, 11 million people watched that. It was by far the highest rated episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nothing stopped it since. At all t- 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 close, but anyway. You, yeah. you'd, you'd almost believe that Tosin Cole could act. Damn. Um, <laughs> so harsh. Wow. <laughs> almost. Um, <laughs> Yikes. But also, um, mm-hmm. with a lot of the episode being shot... At night or in the dark, damn, does second act score go oh, so yeah. well with that mm-hmm. episode? Mm-hmm. So well. Loved mm-hmm. it. It I is. Miss them already. I know. It is such an entirely different feel. Like mm-hmm. there's, you know, the, the, there's a new aspect ratio and then now two to mm-hmm. one. It's anamorphic lenses, which was mm-hmm. not Jamie Childs' decision that was made on the part of the production team going into this. So already they decided, here's how it's going to look. Here's the kind of lenses we're going to use. But like, even just the way that it's like lit and shot mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just the lenses, it just, it looks, I watch it now and like compare it in my mind's eye to like, you know, the first RTD two episodes that we've seen. And like, that's different compared to this and mm-hmm. it's different to what came before it. Well, new, new cameras again, 4k. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever Probably else more. is different. Probably more. It could be 6k or eight. Yeah. At that time, I don't know what kind of cameras they used. Does it does it matter, Warren? No, what new, kind of cameras the, the, they used? The new ones, I like, but the new specials, it's entirely possible they shot them in eight K. Not these. Right, yeah. These would have been in four. Because like, they mm, probably in 2017. Should, I don't know if they shot right. shot them with with Alexas or what they used. Almost to. certainly Alexas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that, even by Jody Whitaker's era, they were, or even Capaldi's, they were pretty much standard. Mm-hmm. 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 It looks different though. It just looks, I remember just, and Dean Egg with the, uh, the, you know, the new, uh, Mm -hmm. visual effects team that's, that's in now, uh, that's entirely new. I just remember just thinking this looks entirely, it reminded me a lot of, uh, just of like Rose, just thinking like, I don't know what to expect when it comes to Mm -hmm. Doctor Who, because I am brought up on the classic series and this is what I know what Doctor Who looks like. And all of a sudden we're getting Rose, which is all like flashy mm-hmm. and like widescreen and single camera. Like that was a massive jump obviously from multicam, mm-hmm. but this felt like had the same, like, I don't know what to compare this to when I was looking at a woman who fell to earth, just because it's just so different to what came before. And that's in a way different to what we got with RTD2, not because of, because RTD2 stuff looks different than RTD1 stuff, Yeah, but it doesn't have that same impact. You know I mean? It just kind of felt like not more of the same, but mm-hmm. not significantly different. It was his own, it's a little more, I don't know, laid back as a way to put it, but it just seems like more standard the way you'd shoot a British TV show now, as opposed to Women Who Fell to Earth, who, which felt a little... Actually, it felt more of its time, like, because it was stuff was shot like that back then, you know? Yeah. Broadchurch for one, you know, kind of yeah, moody yeah. and dark and that kind of thing. Yeah. We'll get to that, I suppose, a little bit, perhaps in the later episodes, but, uh, but yeah. Um, anyway, I wanted to point that out right away, just that there's the overall look and feel of, of the whole thing. But, uh, but yeah, the music was good. The, um, I thought, uh, the, the landscapes, I thought, like mm-hmm. Sheffield. Oh God, has, yeah. Has yeah. Sheffield ever looked so great? That's kind of what I'm talking about. Stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like uh, there, there are some some wonderful, wonderful shots of of Sheffield of all things. One of my favorite is is there's the, a big slow tracking shot where the the crane sort of like <laughs> swoops around. And and goes right to like Ryan and Graham and and Gray is sitting on yeah. the hill. I just like it just looks almost like three D, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, That's just crazy. the way it was like moved it's in. It's like you're reading my notes, sir. Ah, well, I mean, it's it was a good shot. So it's it I'm was a great shot. And then and it. then you've got I, I, I don't know if that's specifically going to be a magic hour, but I mean, it may as well be. It's mm-hmm. like the setting the setting sun and just the 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 the, the oh the glow. It's just so beautiful yeah that's uh it's is that i I suppose that i i must admit i don't know a lot about anamorphic lenses and what uh, kind of effects they would do other than uh creating lens flares in jj abrams movies yeah well no Um, no those are fake lens flares legit lens flares are in the 70s and 80s anamorphic films Mm -hmm. i mean there are probably legit lens flares because of that too but he added a whole bunch of crap so right that's true yeah uh, anyway, Chris, I, 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 stole your thunder by stealing that show. What, what else, what other I mean, shots and, and things gonna, do you have? 
it was gonna get talked about one way one way or the other right. um <clears throat> one thing i really liked is uh during the train sequences mm -hmm. uh he would have the camera like really low like between the seats and kind of just creeping creeping along which which gave a really cool effect yeah yeah all, all, you know, the, the shots that we saw, I just posted them on the YouTube version of this is basically the only daylight shots in mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. episode. Yeah, exactly. After that, everything's at night. Everything's yeah. at night, basically. And then, uh, and then Akinola's score to go, to go with things like that. Just uh, the, 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 the marriage is just so amazing. Mm -hmm. It does well. Yeah. Um, I like that. Um, so Ryan's YouTube videos, I like mm -hmm. that we have the ability for, you know, um, having, having the, the, the straight on, the, ah, there you go. Like love yeah. and monsters, on, one could say. The yeah. straight on, uh, I camera stuff without strictly speaking, breaking the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Um, so you don't. Shot you on don't... Jamie Childs' iPhone for what it's worth. Uh, he said that in the commentary. Uh, oh, okay. yeah, that was actually shot, you know, cause why would it look like he was shooting with a, for the 4k, you know, Alexa, uh, anamorphic lens camera. It would look weird and awkward on a, on a YouTube video. So yeah, he actually shot that on JB Charles design. Photo. I also like these random, not random at all. Cause they designed them <laughs> thumbnails. They're all about blocking for some reason, but they look, they, they look, you know, they, they look like what you'd see if you went on oh, YouTube. If yeah. memory serves, that was not the only mention of secret pigeon. Secret pigeon. <laughs> I think that was not the only mention of secret. Really? Pigeon. In the, throughout the, uh, the season. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's somewhere in there. Yeah. I never noticed that, but I just got fixated on his Canada. Was it his Canada um, pennant or somebody else's upper Canada? It's somebody pennant. else's yeah. in the episode. Yeah, it's uh, talking cat of Ontario. Or no, that's a different story altogether. But yeah, and then and the uh, uh, the only other or one of the only other daylight scenes mm -hmm. um, near the end of the episode. Yeah, I'm jumping to the end when <laughs> when Ryan is trying to ride the bike on his own, right. and the mm -hmm. doctor is kind of like. At a distance, yeah. Obser observing him, just just the 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 width and the scope and the breadth of of the vista there was just like you say. Sheffield has probably never looked better. No, and in the commentary, he said like they shot a reverse of the doctor looking, you know, to cut back to. But then in editing, they thought we don't need it. You know, you know, we could see this the silhouette of the doctor from behind. We know that she's looking. Uh, and I like that restraint. It's like we don't, you know, we shot it, but it's unnecessary. So we don't need to cut it in there, mm -hmm. which is, which is kind of nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the only Sheffield. other shot, the only, the only other shot I had noted down was, uh, at Grace's memorial service. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's the, just the very slow pushing on right, Graham yeah. as he's, as he's eulogizing Grace, mm -hmm. uh, looks great. And more about that later. Oh, Exciting. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I, I also took notes of a couple things, and uh, indeed, I'm the one that made the uh, the screen grab. So those, all mine are, are pertained to, to to some of them a little bit. But I I, I love the the POV shot of of the the sort of the mm, button mm -hmm. that comes in, like we're actually looking like through that weird little like. Rect this is the the D neg. Uh, effect too is that there's mm -hmm. just like an entirely new effects company doing visual effects. It did not feel like, you know, the uh, the mill or milk or something mm -hmm. like that. Which does this. have a certain after you've seen it over three or four years, you do get used to it. Sub, you know, subconsciously more or less. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like I've I I haven't seen the movie, uh, but it won an Oscar for visual effects. This this Godzilla minus one, mm -hmm. and but I've seen enough of the clips. Uh, of it to thinking this is unlike anything I've seen because mm -hmm. it's not from your standard mill, you know, not the mill, but you know, your standard VFX companies yeah. that yeah. always get called in to do the Marvel movies and stuff like that. When, when something sort of comes from outside that you're not used to seeing, mm -hmm. it's such a breath of fresh air, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that the d egg stuff was, uh, was pretty cool. And I like how, how they worked that in there. Uh, I liked the, the, you know, the various, like the atmosphere of the, the four shots, I thought, like when the, uh, the big, um, Hershey's kiss of, a um, <laughs> Uh, capsule that Tim Shaw is in that we find out later. I thought that whole forest scene looked really, really good. I thought it does nothing, nothing to do with Childs, I'm sure, but I get, I get the feeling that when they were, when they were shooting up on the rise, up on the hill, mm -hmm. that was nowhere near the same location as <laughs> No, forest. probably not. No, no, God, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, I also like how they used, uh, practical light sources in scenes. Like the, there's a bunch of like lights along walls in that, uh, 
in that uh, bay where that guy has has somehow kidnapped the Hershey's Kiss thing. And yeah, uh, not you sure know, I pulled that off, but okay. Yeah, the flu- fluorescent lights are there, like that. It, it it's probably lit by something else, but it, but it very much looks like the th- the only thing that's lighting everything in that scene is in fact the stuff that's on mm-hmm. on the walls and stuff like that. I thought that that was kind of cool too. Um, this isn't now. I don't think Jamie Childs is alone in doing this, but for a while it was sort of in vogue. Warren, I don't know if you noticed this in, in other productions as well, but whenever they do like a shot of a, of a close-up of a person and they're doing a conversation, mm-hmm. usually you have it, you know, if I'm, if I'm talking to someone right off camera yeah. on, on yeah. the left, I'm sort of like more on the right. And for a while there, it was like we put them on the left, even though they're talking to someone on the left and there's like Mm -hmm. more space behind their head, uh, or to the, to the right or left of them then. And I don't like that. (laughs) No, because it's crossing the axis. That's why you don't like it. Cause I I guess it is. Is that why? Like, I just, I, I, I I notice it in here and I know for a while, like it might've been, um, Mr. Robot. Is it Mr. Robot? Yeah, but the uh, reason uh, Mr. Robot would be maybe this too is it puts you off kilter because it doesn't, you're so used to watching stuff on the axis, which for people right. who don't know what that means, it's basically you've got a 180 axis and you try and shoot within that and not flip it over because if you do, your brain goes, what the hell is happening? Everything's facing the same way and that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Which is not quite what's happening here, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. It just, it's, it felt off-putting to me. Maybe mm. I was supposed to feel off-putting. And maybe that's just... the reason they do it is just to... Maybe sort of create a sort of distance between like, let's say it's, he's talking to Graham or something, Tim Shaw, then, then it's almost like Graham is sort of isolated because he's kind of in his own little bubble there, as opposed to connecting the two, you know I mean? Visually speaking. I get you. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and, and and we, you know, especially when he takes the mask off and he's got all the teeth in his head and stuff and it it is very disconcerting, but he's looking at someone on, you know, screen left, uh, and it, I don't know. I, I actually remember seeing it. Um, Jeffrey Sachs did a very similar. He actually cut um, half, everybody in the half when, when mm-hmm. the uh, Paul McGann in the TV movie is tied up and he's yelling at the master on, on the floor there. And we basically see a half shot of Paul McGann and we cut back to Eric Roberts and it's the other half of him. So the, like, oh, that I sounds the, pretty calculated to show it, the duality. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Sort of duality thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the 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 <clears throat> Tim Shaw shots. Uh, I'll come back to. Uh, is that where yes. right before you eat someone's salad Halloween? Which is no, a that great is uh, line. when no. they, I know when they confront. No, the the shot that I've shown is the one where he's confronting the doctor and and the fam uh, on the roof there with the just uh, just as a quick side note, I was poking around and um, on British British cinematographer dot co dot uk. Okay, there's an interview with Matt Gray who. I uh, was director of photography for the Star Beast, and there's mm-hmm. a picture of him right next to Nary Alexa. So, okay. yeah, so yes, they, that they're using that for the... No, they're pretty much industry standard now, like yeah. Panavision was for film. Right. Um... I mean, and that was my only thing. I, 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 maybe, I, maybe it was the intention was for me to feel a little off-putting by that, but anyway, mm-hmm. it, 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 <laughs> it, it works the... in a way. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose it is. I, I like how, um, uh, like I was listening to the interview earlier today that I did with Jamie Childs five years ago, and he was talking about how like the anamorphic lenses just helped sort of like do like they altered their 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 approach to it because they could sort of do more group shots mm-hmm. and have them in and people come yeah. up and like there's there's one great shot where the doctor's sort of in front uh in in the sort of the garage there and yet all four of of the fam as we know them at the point at that point are sort of in the background it's just a nice like group shot to get everybody involved in the picture but it doesn't feel like it's like artificially framed mm-hmm. you know to get them all in there i thought it was it was a nice shot. I think he used those. I, I, he used the lenses really well. I think is basically what I've been kind of getting at. But, um, um, but and and I thought uh, some of the crane stuff I thought actually was was really well done. You know, they the they actually shot this on cranes. Yeah. I think that the main cranes <laughs> that they used were I think were like about fifteen feet off the ground or something okay. like that. Um, but I thought it looked really good, especially at nighttime. I thought uh, all that sort of worked well and everything um i don't know if that's anything that you two thought or or no, were yeah, you, you buy all. it you buy that they're up there even though they aren't yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah 
Uh, and the, the last thing I, I wanted to note is that the, uh, when they were in space, they shot them all upside down. Uh, and that's why their hair is sort of like, uh, like that. Uh, and, okay. And they flip the image around and everything. And of course, slowed it up. And when when I see wires. that, I, I think back to, um, the, uh, confidential for, um, Satan pit where they, they talk about how they shot, um, the the outside like when um what's your face is floating out in uh, space. I know who you mean. I can't remember her name now. Yeah. yeah. Um but uh I should know this. But <laughs> the name is Suki me. Cantrell. Her. I know Suki you mean. Suki Craig Cantrell? Yeah. Um, I might be conflating two names there, but yeah. I think you might be. Anyway, my yeah. Mana Burring. Uh when she's there we go. The when she's out yeah. in space uh, and they with them shooting that in a uh, water water tank. Mm-hmm. And, That's I right. Mean, they were in water for that, weren't they? Yeah. Just, just yeah. look at what, what a terrible thing for like all of them to go through because they're in space and for a bunch of humans and maybe the doctor's used to it, but for the humans, it's like, oh my God, I'm asphyxiating at him in the ink, vast inky void. Yeah. And Graham just had his wife die. So, so really does he need to deal with this? Like, wow, <laughs> no. that's a lot to lay on a guy. Really is. Really is. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, uh, a good intro, good intro to the, to the one, year of One scene I want to talk about uh, as well, yeah, just yeah. before I forget about it. Sure. Is when, um, at, at Grace's service, when Ryan's just standing by the door waiting for his father to show up, mm-hmm. saying how he's two hours late and just, um, that's, <laughs> that's kind of the scene I was alluding to when I said, you'd almost believe that Tosin Cole can act, uh, cause he, he really, wow. he really delivered, uh-huh. he really delivered there and, and Whitaker was just a great foil. Mm-hmm. Dark. <sighs> Cruel. Ah, uh, not that cruel. Um, is that it then? I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good start. Good start to the, uh, the season to the year. I didn't realize how much I missed that episode. Cause I, mm-hmm. I don't think I've watched it in years. Like probably not since we, we reviewed since it. We did the commentary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, either. Kind of yeah. want to now though. Yeah. Well, you yeah, could have Warren. You could have. I suppose I, I, suppose I could have, but I yeah. didn't. It's, it's very enjoyable and I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're revisiting Jamie Childs for that reason. That's true. Uh, well, his next one was Demons of the Punjab, as you said, Chris, uh, mm-hmm. actually made, um, towards the end of the entire, uh, first season of Jody Whitaker. Warren, is that the one that you that watched? One of the two. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Demons of the Punjab written by Vinay Patel, of course. Um, Warren, do you have any notes and thoughts sure do. you want to bring sure up do. there? And, and right. I kind of feel the same way about this one as, as Chris does. Although if I'd watched Women Who Held Earth, I'd probably feel the same way too. But just right. watching Demons of the Punjab, I was like, damn, I kind of miss this era. I kind of like what they were what they were aiming for, at least with this particular episode. Like, Some uh, of them, yeah. And yep. uh, I kind of miss, not to crap on Shooty, because we've had one episode of him, or uh, Tenny, who I did, did a pretty good job as the different 14th Doctor, but I'm like, I really still like this Doctor quite a bit. Like, what the mm-hmm. hell? I kind of miss her now. Anyway, um, to the, the episode itself, uh, I noticed right off the top, like when she's talking to, when Yaz is talking to her nanny, she's uh like it's a very warm, but it's also a very soft, so softly shot, which mm-hmm. makes sense. It's you know kind of obvious. But then when they go to um, Lahore, That's everything gets shot, yeah. really not super oversaturated, but more crisp, right? Oh, yeah. More sort of sharp, and uh, and so that really works for what you're doing because you're mm-hmm. you've got this historical event that's not going to be great. Um, so that, but it looks like wherever they shot this, maybe it was Chef Spain. Alano, <laughs> it was in Spain. Looked phenomenal. Like it looked oh my so God. good. Yeah. Like oh my just, god. Like they, you really buy that you're they're in it. Well, I guess they are in a tropical, like or a subtropical uh, paradise of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, I said there's a fair bit of when she first shows the watch. There's a fair bit of blurred vignetting around it, and that they do that in a few shots in this whole thing. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. Perfect example yeah. right there. Yeah. So just to kind of focus on things. So they and that's also kind of a bonus of anamorphic. You can kind of do that analog with anamorphic a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's sort of built for that. Maybe the anamorphic lenses now are better than the ones in the eighties. Well, the ones in the eighties certainly did blur. Right. Uh, sides. Anyway, uh, weird side note I have because I'll have several of those. Here we I go. I said chip. No, this is actually legit. Chidnell area companions just feel more real British working class and not like much as I like Rose and Donna, they feel like a TV version of a working class person. They feel like RTDs. <laughs> I've been raised and lived in TV my whole life version. Whereas the, like, you know, uh, the, the fam all kind of feel like, and this is going to sound stupid for a Canadian, they kind of feel more like real genuine Brits than the mm-hmm. TV people in the RTD era or I even the Moffat era for that matter. Yeah. I think I think one of the one of the things that that helps with that, especially for Graham and Yaz, is seeing them in that context in the woman who felt the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Because mm-hmm. Yaz, yeah. Yaz being a police officer, 
the trainee and you see her breaking up the that argument on the streets and mm. and her her asking for 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 weirder and, and more strange uh cases mm -hmm. and then um like graham says if you want to know what's happening ask a bus driver yeah so yeah, yeah as a retired seemed... bus driver he's at the bus terminal talking to talking to his former yeah. colleagues could and, just be yeah. acting too or the way you do stuff but it just feels more genuine maybe that's I partly due mean. to broad church and other stuff that uh, that uh, chibnall had done which is a lot yeah. different than you know to be fair like rtd has done great stuff but and so has Moffat. Moffat's done a lot of stuff that's kind of in his interests, and so has RTD. And Chibnall's done more sort of down to earthy British stuff, just in yeah, his oeuvre, right? So even even just and it's funny you mentioned that. I mean, this is a bit of a tangent, but it's worth mentioning just because uh, you know the names: mm -hmm. Graham O'Brien, Ryan Sinclair, Yasmin yeah, yeah. Khan. Yeah. Ordinary names, so to speak. They're not. Yeah. They're not. It's not a Ruby Sunday or, or a Donna Noble a, for that matter, or a Donna Noble yeah, or an Amy Pond. Yeah, you know yeah, exactly. any of these other sort All of which like, is fun. I'm not criticizing any of no. it, but it's just different. It is, you know, but they're they're almost like operatic mm -hmm. companion names yeah. for like, oh, they're just, you know, normal people. But are they really? With and names there's like nothing those? wrong with making Doctor Who height by its nature. It's going to be anyway. But yeah, but this just felt more. And even John Bishop, he just he comes across as probably the most down to earth dude there. Right. So yeah. or even Jody's mm -hmm. doctor, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I okay. Enough it. of all that. Uh, <laughs> let's. I, <laughs> right. I, I I said with um I said with, same as you, Chris. I'm like I listen to this score. I'm like just from the beginning of the whole. I, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying, but the the Indian singer doing his yeah, bit yeah. of it. Like man, that just it just works so well. It's so good. Uh, when they talk about partition, when they they do this like nice little push in just to really harm our home, this ain't great to anybody who's never heard of partition. Yeah. And then when the then they're trying to talk about it and they you know do the need the needful exposition there's a mm -hmm. lot of handheld i noticed just to go oh we are not in safe territory anymore basically is what they're what they're sort of conveying there because it's all the companions who are like oh ooh, uh. yeah yeah the, yeah it's right where the families evolved i right? want to return to that later yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of shallow depth of feel whenever the demons are around i noticed mm -hmm. um and i also this is another random thing i'm talking to uncover my latent worry i'm a good line and it doesn't at all hit home <laughs> not at all <laughs> and, uh i said uh let's see what else here um i've said it before this is again just a side note but it's really mm -hmm. cool that the doctor was never a woman before so now she gets to have this experience at this wedding because she'd never it just was wasn't a thing she could do before and now it is That's right <laughs> it's kind of cool that they could show that i thought until right. i guess until i guess retconned i suppose but yeah sure mm -hmm. but I, well, I guess so yes yeah. Yeah, yeah but at the time we didn't know that so I yeah mean, yeah uh, okay because i mean um, even even in uh the woman who fell to earth when when uh she's like i need to change my clothes Mm -hmm. Or no, she's told to change her outfit. Yeah, and well, she goes, sh and she, like she, goes shop she goes shopping. And she's like, it's been forever since I've had to buy clothes for a woman. Yeah, so that's true. Which at the time I assumed was having to buy it for your granddaughter or your Susan, wife sure. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. um, why not? Uh, so another thing I have is when she's in the ship and then they explain their true nature, the the, the demons. I can't remember the hell they're official. Yeah, we'll call them is. the demons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she kind of walks into focus in the shot and so do they. And it just kind of really works when they do that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, what's happening here? Uh, sorry. Uh, I just had a plugin tell me that I should download things. Sorry about that. That's a Firefox thing. <laughs> Who cares about Firefox? Well, I just warned. popped in and took over my screen. So. Oh, right, sorry about that. Okay. Um, uh, another thing I noticed uh, is there's a lot of background radio stuff, uh, and mm -hmm. when the violence hits, you basically don't really see much of anything. You just see blood on flowers, and that is much more effective. The radio stuff especially is effective because it yeah. gives you this sense of dread without spending any money, right? And, and the flowers <laughs> thing too. Like, mm -hmm. it's cheap, but it's a, it actually, I think it's more effective than seeing the violence. Right, um, right. Also, with that, there's a whole shot where they shoot through the trigger of the bear of the gun that the what his brother has got, yeah, and yep. uh, and it just goes to sunshine going through it. And I thought that was also much more effective too. And that's it, another thing where anamorphic lenses really lend themselves. To I I stuff. know what there you mean. Go. Yeah, that's the shot right uh, there. Yeah. Uh, it's one. It's one that I noticed as well. That whole. I mean, that whole scene is shot during the magic hour as well. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it looks great. It looks amazing. Close to sunset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I also have a random note. Nothing worse than when normal people lose their minds. I'm like, hmm, well now, does that have any relevance in 2024, I ask? Uh, uh. <laughs> no, none whatsoever. Uh, I love where they uh, where they sort of, they, the one guy dies, and then they show all the people who are dying during partition, and it just kind of, mm -hmm. that shot upwards, and then they transition into the top of the TARDIS console is great. Yeah, there, there you go. It's just a great shot. It's fantastic. Yeah, it and seeing lovely. all those, like hologram of people like you're really you know as i said at the end of my notes this episode is still kicking the 
nethers. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it is. It really is, does pack a punch. It does. Uh, yeah, this was a really good episode. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it was, I, I, I watched the documentary in the Partition of India because I didn't know anything about it. Uh, and it's, it's not the first or last time that the Chibnall era made me like dive deeper into mm-hmm. the event that was taking place, mm. uh, based on the episode that was being shot, which I thought was, you know, that's like, it went back to basics of the original remit of Doctor Who, you mm-hmm. know, slightly, slightly being more educational. And I thought this is, you know, I felt a little bit of shame not knowing about it. Let's face it. Um, but I mean, if you didn't learn about it in school, you're kind of on your own to sort of, to, you know, go out and discover these mm-hmm. things anyways. So, um, yeah, a really good episode. Very, very good episode. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the man, uh, there's, uh, you covered off a whole lot of shots. I'm just looking through my yeah, notes sorry. that I made. No, no, that's <laughs> fine. That's absolutely fine. But you know, there's just, uh, it, uh just like the look of, of Spain. Mm-hmm. In, oh yeah. It looks so good. Like, uh, and the music that tied in with it as well. And like the double drums during the, uh, some of the, the exciting bits. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, it just, it's the Spain looked like proper actual, uh, Pakistan, India. I mean, I've in, never in been to era. either, Punjab. to be fair. So. No. The only thing that was a visual letdown is where they show the war stuff, and it's kind of the cliche thing of, okay, we dial down the saturation, and, right. and we're in, and it's, I get why, but it just kind of took away from all the other great visuals, and that's a minor complaint, so. I understand, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm just trying to, like, think about, like, some of the, 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 Impressive shots. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the vistas looked great, but even mm-hmm. like the stuff like shot yeah. in. Yeah. The, the, it's, it's really nicely set up for, because it's a wooden shack, you can yeah. put shafts of light in where you want to and sort oh, of yeah. shape it There's, a bit more than you could otherwise. Yeah. Like sometimes it's, it, you know, lit by a, like a, like a lantern of some mm-hmm. sort. Um, but there's also like, you know, just like, uh, like the shafts of light just sort of come in just like mm-hmm. perfectly matching, like where the eye yeah, line is. Yeah, you can get away with the Captain you... Kirk light and it's, it doesn't look, un, doesn't look <laughs> well, unmotivated like it does with Captain Kirk. A little bit of a Captain Kirk light. I, I know what you mean. Uh, also there's a, there's a great shot when, after they, they escape out of the, uh, the assassin's ship mm-hmm. cave whatever it is and where uh ryan um uh, and pram are running through the grass to the to the daisies and stuff and the and the camera sort of like uh, it cuts to yaz and this was a wait over there and the camera just sort of whips around and mm-hmm. then sort of tracks the doctor running through it as well that was just a really a really cool looking shot um which is one of my favorites what? but yeah, go ahead. Warren. One of my thoughts is just a dumb little thought, but when I was watching, I'm like, why are the doctor and Graham just sweating their butts off? Especially <laughs> Graham. He's got a leather yeah, jacket in Pakistan. It's got to be hot as hell. Like, and that overcoat can't exactly be light either with the doctor's no. got on. Like, no, I know what you mean. Uh, also, I just, and just to touch on one uh, thing there that you mentioned about the shaky stuff, like whenever mm-hmm. like there's, there are unfamiliar settings or like unpleasant things going on. There's a scene, the confrontation there, um, with, uh, why can't I remember Prem's brother? Uh, the one I who can't goes, either. And I saw uh, it yesterday. So, but, uh, the doctor's confronting him and mm, with, yeah, and yeah. he's holding a gun and the doctor shots are perfectly steady. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're on a tripod or if the, or the camera person is holding it steady, but then you cut back to him and it's all handheld and slightly jittery and stuff while he's mm-hmm. holding the gun to sort of like, you know, sort of show that his mental balance right now is not hey, good. Yeah. You know, and it's, like, it was a wonderfully subtle mm-hmm. little, uh, way of showing, uh, the differences in the, in the, um, in the confrontation, which I thought was really that's well done. Yeah. Manish, Manish. Manish, so, yeah. that's his name. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Manish is his name. Yeah. Perfect. Chris, do you have any, uh, any thoughts of Demons of the Punjab at all? Oh, I really wish I did. Um, <laughs> did. I got, no, no, like seriously, like I, I got a bit of a, bit of a season 11 bug watching, mm-hmm. watching the, the two. Right. And I would have liked to have gone back and watched Demons of the Punjab, Rosa, uh, <laughs> even mm-hmm. Saranga Conundrum, mostly for Brett Goldstein, but, uh, <laughs> right. I just ran out of time basically. So Aww. I think, I think, I think at least Demons of the Punjab is one that I oh, need yeah, to, it's... I need to sit back down and and watch for the first time in it was five I, yeah, years or whatever i had watched it in yeah. quite some time and it, it totally holds up it's very good it is very good indeed uh which takes spent, us uh, spent more yeah. time watching some of the the other vam like uh the the super cut of like uh women's reactions to jody whitaker being cast and which is uh, pretty time. cool cool event too 
Um, which just takes us neatly to It Takes You Away. Yeah, uh, which I also watched. <laughs> Bye, uh, Ed Hayes. It's, uh... I'm rather, yeah. I didn't like it at the time, and I had a hard time coming up with notes. And the oh, main really? reason okay. is... I, I actually wrote this in my notes. I'm struggling to find something. This is probably 10 minutes in. Uh, other right. than this lighting is good and moody, which it is. <laughs> it really is. It looks like, it looks like Norway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like like the, the it's shot somewhere in Wales. I asked Jamie Childs about this because I think it, it, this looks like Norway. Like there's the the compositing with the the visual effects in the background. Like mm-hmm. you know, you can't re- maybe they could replace those trees. Maybe all those trees in those shots are also somewhere in Wales. But it just it looks it looks like Norway. I was convinced. It has a right? dour feel of Norway. Yeah. I've never been to Norway. I've been to Sweden and Finland and and Scandinavian countries. Just got that kind of like. I guess Vancouver has this too a little bit. Just it's right. kind of a little gray and not oppressive, but uh, I'm trying to find the right word for it. But you kind of know I'm, it's, <laughs> things are know, a tiny bit desaturated. I know what you mean. Like just like it just it looked like a you know we've all seen clips perhaps mm-hmm. just on TV of dark brooding Scandinavian yeah, crime exactly. dramas, and it isn't as full on as they are. But there's an element of that. I I put in my notes Ghost Light by Way of Wallander because that's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Although it makes more sense than Ghost Light, but yeah. anything does. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there I thought like some of the shots like just creepy, like of, of uh, mm-hmm. Haunted sort of looking through the, the window and they could see the fam through like the window. Like it just, as you say, just dark and 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 Moody. gloomy. Like, yeah. uh, is it desaturated? Is that what we're looking at? It's a little well? bit. Yeah, it's a little yeah. desaturated. In the uh, in the grade or something like that, mm-hmm. just to sort of the, to to paint a picture and stuff, and you but know, parts the shots. of it more than others, like you can and you could you can do now with that. We can desaturate that section, but not that section, right? That's but true. stuff like this shot you got here of there in the cabin, it all looks kind of like ordinary, but a little sucked out of the life, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Which you know kind of represents what's actually going on in the actual drama. None of that itself, actually amounts to point. a show I like, <laughs> but 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 I can admire the craft behind it. Uh, right. I said there's also some very good sound design because a lot of it is sold by sound. Really, the part yeah. that's uh, the biggest letdown is where they go into whatever the bridging universe thing is with <laughs> ribbons. Who just seems like there's this <laughs> random goblin and the moths. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> but this guy, this guy just kind of shows up, and I'm like, whoa, what's the point of this dude? The moths I could buy, but this guy is just like you know. Walmart golem who shows up and that's weird. <laughs> so I, I am, I'm sure we talked about this at the time, mm-hmm. uh, but like there was a shot shared, I think by millennium effects who did the creature design on, on this in series 11. And there was a shot of like two of the, like there was two really large creatures or something posing on set. They go, oh, look at our costumes and stuff. Looking forward to, mm-hmm. uh, the, you know, the new episode coming out or something like that. This is like when they were making it. And none of that showed up. Mm-hmm. And I look at it now, and I feel like the ribbons thing is so tacked on. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like that is, there's been a lot of rewrites and a lot of reshoots to replace a sequence that's for some reason didn't work out mm-hmm. or was not long enough and they needed to, uh, you know, do a, a longer sequence and thus they had to completely do a different character. Because ribbons shows up, he's shifty. And he dies. Yeah. And he somehow and lives it. in a moth infested land with string. Yeah. <laughs> None of which I, makes any damn sense. Although no. I guess that's part of the point of the episode. But I th- Yeah. The, and, and the doctor mentions uh, a moth once uh, mm-hmm. when, when they get through to the mirror land. And so that makes me think that there, there were probably moths in this, in this original sequence. Otherwise, if it wasn't for that, I would have thought... Did they just invent an entire moth sequence because like the mm-hmm. episode was like 15 minutes short Which or something like that? seems unlikely because those things probably cost a lot of CG money, so. Yeah, it, so it, it just they maybe felt... they had those originally and they sort of <sighs> modified them to attack ribbons instead of whatever these things are they never ended up using. I don't That's know. That's just me guessing. I have no idea. I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it feels like, you know, an episode that, that perhaps they didn't think had enough peril to it. Mm-hmm. And so we had to throw something weird in with moss and lights and piranha moss and stuff like that, because Mm -hmm. if they had just gone through the, you know, the mirror and shown up in mirror world, would they have thought, A, it's too boring and B, it's 20 minutes light. And so therefore (laughs) we have to create something. Also, it ends with a a frog that's gray somehow. So, I mean, maybe you need some, (laughs) some uh, uh, like hors d'oeuvres of weirdness before you get to the main event. Right. 
That's true. Uh, uh, I Speaking of Grace, I thought the Grace reveal is not that bad because it's just kind of like you see her off in the distance, you kind of know who she is, and then yeah. you do kind of like a nice sort of tracking shot across the sheets, and then yeah, she yeah. reveals herself, and I like, ah, that was nicely done. And there's some good acting between the two of them, too. Like, yeah, we, we find out it's Grace when... Mm-hmm. Graham finds exactly. Out. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I like about it. Uh, you know, we can mm-hmm. kind of guess who it's going to be at this point, but uh, I thought, yeah, the reveal was was really nicely done. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's uh, true. Other than that, I have the doctor was part of a polycule because she's talking about her fifth of twelve grandmas or whatever it <laughs> right. was, and I'm like, ah, so that's how they do it at Gallifrey. All right, I'm not <laughs> right? judging. I'm not judging or kink shaming or anything else. I'm just uh, just noting. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, that, till that gets retconned. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good point. I, I, I loved the scene because we don't usually get uh, a dishonesty out of this new doctor. I feel like mm-hmm. they've done sort of a course correction correction from troubles troublesome Peter Capaldi doctor to like uh, very lovely happy puppy mm-hmm. uh, doctor in Jodie Whittaker, mm. where she sort of like you know knowing how to blind goes to Ryan, you know, like I've drawn a map here on the thing, uh, just take care of her and stuff. And it says like, you know, uh, assume her dad is dead, mm-hmm. keep her safe. And I just thought that's dark. She just lied. She outright lied. And for a, you know, a reason where it's, this is the darkest timeline at all. I thought that was a really well-made no. shot. But it also and, serves uh, a purpose when they go to the mirror world and it's in reverse. That wouldn't work with a map or it wouldn't work as well anyway. It wouldn't. No, it wouldn't work as, but she, you know, she, she lies. She lies mm-hmm. in saying I'm drawing a map yeah. uh, yeah. and lying to this poor child whose dad is but probably But you're right. Dead. She doesn't do all that much throughout no. the series. No, exactly. There is, there are, there are, I mean, the, the shots in the nether, I mean, there are some you know, interesting shots with the with the red light sort of up mm-hmm. above the sort of lantern and stuff like that, which I think, you know, the best you could do with a questionable subplot is to at least make it look visually yeah, interesting. Yeah, which I and think I, they did as good as they could with the material they had, which wasn't a hell of a lot from what I could tell. Not a um, lot. Also, I, I note in here, and this got nothing to do with directing, but there's a very, the, the speech of her living more and lost more and seeing more, and I mm-hmm. thought that was very affecting. She does sell it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of it for my notes. There's just not a lot to this episode that... You know, it's just kind of there. Right. Not entirely terrible. I, I never, like, some people love the frog and all that stuff. It just oh, never. Oh, the frog. It, it never the took frog. for me. It just, I was like, you know, I watch a lot of really loopy nonsense, but this frog <laughs> talking to me, I ain't buying it. I just ain't buying it. I love that Especially it was when br- it does the hand thing. I'm like, oh, come on. Really? I love that it was an actual frog and not some CG frog. That's what made me happy. You could tell that it was a proper, yeah. slightly this is, dodgy This is frog. just a baby Yoda tease for you. A bigger, a cuter frog. Maybe a little bit. Chris, do you have any memories or uh, or thoughts on? Uh, <laughs> not on enough the... <laughs> to get in, not enough to get into here, no. Um, yeah. But I I, I I I I do miss the um the split in fandom that the frog caused. Well, I'm on one side of it. <laughs> it I'm was... on the angry angry time zone Brit side of this one, I guess. Mm. <laughs> Just to date this right. discussion, mm-hmm. yeah. To the latest fan controversy at the time. Uh huh. Well, this is coming out literally like four days after we're recording it. Oh, so then okay. Uh, so it'll be a current yeah, yeah. fan controversy. It is actually proper current. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, let's let's uh, let's move on then, shall we, to the the final episode in this mini scope. That being uh, the catchly titled uh, "The Battle of Ranscor Av Kolos." Um, Chris, this was this was yours. I can't remember if you chose this or Warren derided it enough that you had no option. But to watch it, but uh, <laughs> I think it's some from column A, some from column B, yep. a little bit, very Rans- probably. Yep. Rand score of Colos, Chris. What do you got? Oh, anything? I, I I I was running out of steam a little bit on this one, right? So my my notes are are incredibly minimal. Um, the um, what do I have here? The yellowish brownish grating to the image gives a weird, weird, spooky kind of feeling or sense to. The episode. Uh huh. Um, and then <laughs> the only other thing I had, I apologize. Um, <laughs> in a bit of a continuation from the woman who fell to earth. Here we go. When uh, Graham is confronting Tim Shaw about Grace's death. Right. We have this lovely, slow little mm-hmm. push in on uh, yeah. Graham as he does that. It's so slow that I only really noticed it when it when I was sort of like scrubbing through it. Mm-hmm. earlier today so like oh wow there's a bit of this is a very slow uh, push in there which i thought was kind of mm-hmm. cool yeah. so i'm not sure i'm not sure how intentional that was i mean it was obviously not unintentional but i don't know if it was meant to the echo mirror, the, yeah be a echo mirror. the 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 woman who fell to earth or not but I, I i thought it was fantastic yeah whether it was intentional or not also graham is bloodthirsty there which is kind of cool. he yeah i mean the whole 
Not without reason either. I mean, er- earlier on in the episode, shortly after the land and all that kind of stuff, when Graham is talking to the doctor, and once they figure out it's Tim, it is Tim Shaw, when Graham is talking to the doctor, he's like, "If I get the chance, I'm going to kill him." Mm-hmm. And, and you believe doctor, it? You're like, yeah, the doctor's all like, "Oh, you're not coming with me if that's yeah, the case, sunshine." Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that was that was a really tense exchange, mm-hmm. and and just some great character work mm-hmm. for both of them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the two. And well shot. In a quarry. In a quarry, no less. In a quarry. You know, a proper actual quarry. Doctor Who returns to a quarry. And I thought there was, you know, it, parts of it looked like like a proper quarry. And uh, and other times they sort of like, you know, worked in some some CG magic in there. I, I thought uh, like there was, uh, when the ship is there, I thought like, you know, mm, some yeah, really yeah. cool. Like it reminded me of Arrival, actually. The spaceship yeah, design Arrival. It's just the big. Sure, just the verticality vertical. of it. Or yeah. Prometheus, or even Dune 2, a lot of the uh, the Harkonnen ships look a little bit like that. Ah, a little bit, yeah, actually. So Dune 2 basically copied uh, Doctor Who. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what happened. What you're saying. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it, we, you know, it looks good. Uh, there's, there's, there's a, I think Mark Addy's reveal uh, out of the shadows where you could see the point <laughs> of the gun and then he sort of steps out of the shadows. We see it in the, uh, the, the, um, the coming soon trailer at the end of Woman Who Fell to Earth as well. It's a good yeah. shot, which I thought was I, a well well made shot. But I, I'm sure this is not going to paint me in the most favorable of lights. But there are certain actors who I, for some reason, can only ever associate with with certain roles. Mm-hmm. Like um, I don't think you're alone in that. Um, oh, crumb! What's his face? Mark um, Addy. No, no, no. Um, from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the guy who plays Cameron. I know um, what you mean. Oh, uh, yeah, who's in Succession. I can't remember his... Uh, is he really? He's yes. Well, I know yes, he's, he's, he's a, a failed Star Trek character. He's in, he's in Generations. So, <laughs> he's I mean. Trek no, but he's, he's got like... He's he's at least the first few seasons of Succession. Yeah. So, uh, like, I, I can... No matter, no matter what I see that guy in, I can only ever associate him with, with Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Right. For Mark Addy... Yeah. It's the second Flintstones film, Viva Rock Vegas. <laughs> wow. So every, that any, is incredibly <laughs> specific. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so anytime I see him, I just think of him as Fred Flintstone. And it just... It, it he was takes, Fred Flintstone. Yeah. He took over from uh, John Goodman in the sequel. Wow. Did they just kind of recast everything? Because they're like, well, yeah. this is a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they recast everything. Yes. Interesting. Um, so that's anytime I see Mark Addy, I'm sorry. I think of Fred Flintstone. So right. random observation: uh, the Flintstones movies of the '90s are the Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, and whatever the hell the other one's called, <laughs> <laughs> Afterlife of we'll be, the 2020s. They're basically we'll be, the same kind of film. Are we remaking the Flintstones movies. In yeah, dark and gritty reboot time. of the Flintstones. Yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> Although I can't remember Scorsese. the comic book company, but they own the rights to all those. So they had one with um, I can't remember his name. The the not pink pants their pink cat um right who's whatever his name is but anyway it's set in the 50s oh. and he's openly gay and, or not yeah. openly gay but right. cl- clearly like he's a liberace type and he, but he's uh-huh. beloved this beloved actor and him and i don't know if it's huckleberry hound or one of those other guys is his lover yeah. and it's actually it's really sna- well done so right. it's not not snagglepuss is it no it is snagglepuss but it's all yeah. they just had carte blanche so they're like well we're doing mm. a 50s uh gay cat story and it but it's all played like completely straight it's really a, a, actually excellent comic book series 50s gay cat comic book series. Yes, yep. kids, we wound up there, yep. there you go. trying to avoid <laughs> talking about Rancor F. Coles, apparently. Yeah, we um, basically did. Uh, I I mean, there was a, a, there was uh, a, a nice shot. I thought some, like, again, like, it, it, was, it, it was shooting in that weird factory gas works. I don't know what it is. Steam makes sets look great. I oh, mean, yeah. and mm-hmm. like, you know, side lighting, you know, like practical lighting again, sort of like featured heavily in the ship. I guess it is a spaceship, I guess. Um uh, that they were in, I thought that that looked kind of cool. I thought um, again there was some some sort of like visual symmetry to the shots of Tim Shaw, you know, looking out of the one side of the camera. The ones that I complained about feel, making me feel off kilter uh, before those those sort of show up again here as well. Um, you know, there there's some visually interesting stuff. I thought in this episode, some, you know, with the, with the bright light and behind and everything, but like story wise, it's, it is, it is tough to get around mm-hmm. how by the writer's own admission, how underwhelming the story itself is mm. as a finale. 
uh, you know, there's like one big explosion, which Yaz is running away from, which I thought was actually also a cool shot. I don't know how they did it. If they actually did that, uh, in one shot or if she's like running against it, it didn't look blue screeny or anything like that, but it certainly wasn't as brave and bold as Sylvester McCoy walking out no. of a, an exploding tent at the end of the Never a tire so. of telling you. You know, um, but, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Ranscor F. Kolos is, uh. Is uh, is an episode that existed. <laughs> that, it sure uh, is. That ended. Uh, as finales uh, it's, go, it's not the best. This is where I no. reverse my praise that both Moffat and um, uh, RTD are much better at finales. Nothing, nothing to do with with Jamie Childs, but uh, no. Uh, uh, J- Jody's Whitaker's speech at the end is is still very touching, though. Yep, it's a good ending. It, you know, it, it it's a good closure, I guess. It uh, you know, well, yeah, it's it's good. In, it, <laughs> In, in in the um uh somewhere the tea is getting cold kind of vein yeah uh, it's 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 a good ending in that regard uh, it could have been could have been stronger I mean as a series finale is can uh, goes it yeah, a more oof would have been nice yeah but it, it is more of the last uh, speech of um the reign of terror our destiny is in the stars so let's go search <laughs> for them is what the doctor says at the end of the reign of reign of terror and I thought it's kind of like about that. You know, feels about that consequential uh, at the end of a season, which really back then was just, we're just taking a break for eight weeks. We'll be back yeah. though. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> we're going to the south of France and that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, but, uh, that's it. That is, uh, the four episodes that Jamie Childs, mm-hmm. uh, directed for Doctor Who. Uh, he's gone on to, as we say, he's gone on to do the Sandman, Dark Materials, uh, Willow, um, and uh, and his movie Jackdaw, uh, he did say he did say in 2019 that uh, you know it 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 sort of changed his life, um, you know, starting on Doctor Who so early on in his career that he would uh, be intrigued to come back to it someday. Do we think? What would we think if Jamie Childs, with a few more shows and experience under his belt, how how do you think he would do? Do you would yeah, you want to see him back? When yeah. he's got Kim and well, Julie, he does a good job. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I absolutely want to see him back. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Well, come on back, Jamie Childs. All is forgiven. <laughs> we, is yes, we saying. decide all these things. <laughs> we do. We do indeed. Uh, what we well, don't the one, dis- uh-huh. one, one, one thing. One, of the, one, one thing we've talked about with Doctor Who, uh, right. especially the new the new series, uh, is just the. I mean, I don't know if it's a case of just there are that many more capable, talented, visionary people out there behind the camera, or. If it's just they're 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 searching their their ability to find those people is just mm-hmm. so well honed, but man, they find some good people for for uh, direction. Adam Smiths of the world, notwithstanding, or Keith Bokes of the world, notwithstanding. I think Adam, Andrew Gunn <laughs> of that the vendetta world. Andrew Gunn, ago. sorry, <laughs> yeah, I keep I keep mixing you do, the two of them up because they start with A. They're A. They, they're A names. Yeah, they follow each other. Sorry, Andrew Gunn, them. Adam Smith, you are phenomenal. Yep, absolutely, he is. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, there will be there will be other there will be other great uh, Doctor Who uh, directors as well. So, and and hopefully, yeah. you know, a lot more women directing too as well. So, you know, it's uh, um, there's a lot of great directors out there. Jamie Childs is one of them. Uh, there are fewer episodes to make nowadays, so perhaps That's it's harder too. to get on Doctor Who than uh, than you sure. can. But uh, but if 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 the opportunity arose, I think we'd like to see more of his stuff. So, um. Uh, we said we, we, we just, Warren, you joked about us deciding, uh, who's directing on Doctor Who. What we don't decide is, mm-hmm. uh, who is next in the miniscope. Uh, we let mm-hmm. pure fate and a <laughs> Chris's, uh, finger and closed eye on the randomizer select our, uh, next victim in the miniscope. Uh, the dwindling list, might I add, on our miniscope here. 11, well, let's, let's hopeful, hope for some more, uh. Repeat writers and or directors in that, the in the uh, RTD two era. That's true. Well, Chris, uh, let's let's uh, let's select the next one now. There we go. There, oh, you're looking now. You're looking at it this time. You some, ah, see, so sometimes uh, now it's official. Close, close my eyes. Yep. Yeah. I know. God, I didn't. I didn't realize. I have that, to make. So. I have to make sure it's actually changing. <laughs> Changing the things. That's true. And not just going Before between I have the, to shut my eyes. 11 different things. I mean, I feel like we only do like one or two mini scopes a year at this point anyway. So mm-hmm. like we've, we're, we're well, not exactly. We're going to stretch out these 11. Yeah. We're not, we're not actually running out of time for these things, but uh, I yeah. always like to see who we get and we'll see who we get now. Chris, stop. 
Oh my goodness. Terry Nation. Oh, okay. That's a two parter. Terry <laughs> Nation. Um, might at be the more very than least. A uh, yeah. <laughs> Long last Terry Nation. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Do we need to run him down? The Daleks, keys of, the Keys Daleks, of Marinus, keys of Marinus, the Dalek Invasion of Earth, the, the chase, chase, the Daleks Master Plan, half of, good luck yeah. uh, divvying yeah. up that. Well, uh, do our best. Then we get into uh, the 70s with uh, your death to the planet of the Daleks and death of the Daleks and the android invasion and genesis of the Daleks. Can't mm -hmm. forget that. More or less. And <laughs> destiny of the Daleks. I count 10 off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, that'll be a multi-part mini scope uh, oh, yeah. covering off Terry Nation, folks. Uh, the per let's face it, one of the most important writers in Doctor Who history. Maybe not the best, but one of the most important ones for sure. Certainly the most important. Um, so, all right, next mini scope. So, um, yes, Chris. Six, so I'm just trying to. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, sixty-two episodes. So yeah, the Daleks, Keys of Marinus, Daleks in Major Earth, Chase, Ah, Mission to the Unknown. That's the one that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one going. do we watch though? Do we watch the the original or do we? Well, watch originally the... unknown, we have that that remake from. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Know, Which is British quite good University actually. Series. I got really got sucked yeah. into it watching it. Yeah. Um, but at least everything else is quite uh, quite complete. Yep. Well, That's plan that, was ending. that could be uh that'll be a fun time. That'll be a fun time, folks. <laughs> it's a lot uh, of prep. It's a lot of prep for that one. So yeah. Tuck in, tuck well, in. That might be an after shooty series <laughs> endeavor. <laughs> twenty twenty seven, sort of. No, thing. I don't, not yeah. that far off. No, uh, I mean okay. after this current series, not yeah, this I whole run. Oh, it'll be a while. It'll be a while until we uh, watch. Not that I necessarily want to sit down and, and read the novelizations for Master Plan, but I do. I do have them on the shelf behind Ooh. me. So. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted to go that route just to have yeah. something to work off of. Well, maybe by then, Ian Levine's. Uh, <laughs> grand dream <laughs> of, his grand of, ai dream will yeah, have uh yeah, exactly made uh all that all that stuff watchable yeah. all right well uh that's it hey uh chris uh you're off to london uh, next week so you won't be around for the next couple weeks of of this here podcast i know right it's that time is it that time it's uh, close to, oh no, a couple weeks from the hands. That's right. We're mm. recording in, in advance, but not that far in advance. You're you're still back to one more. So uh, yeah. And if uh, we're, we're recording the way I think I am, this is actually the past because he will be at my place. He this, will be. But yep. the recording preceding this. Yeah. So uh, I yes. hope you two didn't end up in a giant scrap uh, fighting for. Uh, <laughs> well, we code caused space. a um, uh, chronic hysteresis with all this time jumping we're doing here. Oh, it, it is a bit confusing, hence me being very confused. But uh, mm. so, so next week, Chris returns for one week only before he goes <laughs> off. Uh, as we yeah, wrap, yeah, up. We got, the, got the one more, and then and then uh, two weeks after, I'll That's not be right. around. Yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, well, that's it for this episode of Radio Free Scarrow. Until next time, I am Stephen in Edmonton. Warren of Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. So long for now. <laughs> <laughs>